I'm in troll mode right now because I'm cold, even though it's very sunny out. Um, it's cold in our house. So, but welcome back to reading with Adriel. We're going to be continuing Hooray for Anna Hibiscus by Achenuk. So I hope that you can see that in the lighting. Wow, it's super bright out. Okay, so this chapter, so we, last chapter, or last video, we read um, uh, about um, Anna Hibiscus and her hair. And this new chapter is called Anna Hibiscus and the New Generator. Oh, yeah, so Anna Hibiscus lives in Africa. Amazing Africa. She lives with her whole family in a big white house in a beautiful garden in the middle of a big compound. Like every other family in Africa, the evening is a busy time for Anna's family. Clothes must be washed and rinsed and hung up to dry. Food must be prepared while it is still light out. There's a whole family doing all kinds of stuff. Change your clothes, shouts Auntie Jolly at the cousins returning from school. Come and pound the yam, calls Anna's mother, mother when she gets home from work. Anna Hibiscus runs to loose, to loose double from her mother's back. She's too small to pound yam, but she's big enough to look after double. And she's big enough to wash her school clothes. And she's big enough to wash, er, <laughs> and she's big enough to wash her school clothes ready for the next day. Food is cooked and eaten and cleared away. It is now dark outside, but in the lit up house, there is still a lot going on. The bright and shining house is full of noise. The air conditioners are loud. The television even, is even louder. Small cousins are crying and whining because they are too tired, or they are tired and do not want to go to bed. Double and trouble whine the loudest of all. Even outside the veranda, the, the, on the veranda, the radio is talking and singing above the voices of the uncles. Only grandmother and grandfather are still a quiet, or still and quiet, dozing in the corner. Soon, Double and Trouble crawl into their soft laps and fall asleep. Them doing everything. One night, Anna Hibiscus and her cousins were watching television. Aunties were sewing and sewing on noisy machines. Big cousins were homework. Big cousins were homeworking under bright lights. Uncles were arguing with the radio. Suddenly, the lights went out. The radio and television were quenched. The air conditioners and sewing machines fell silent. Electricity was gone. This was quite normal in Africa. If electricity is, is there, it is there. If it is gone, it is gone. No point asking questions. That, that is how it is in Africa. Everything is unpredictable. You can count on it. <laughs> That's funny. It was dark. Now it was quiet. Now, Anna Hibiscus could see nothing, but she could hear her heart pounding in her chest. She could hear the frogs croak and the mosquitoes whine. She could hear the slap of the lagoon water on the city's dry banks and the roar of cars in the dark streets. It was dark. It was quiet. It was wonderful. For a moment, nobody moved. Not an inch. Not uncles or aunties or cousins. Nobody moved except grandfather and grandmother. They sat bolt. They sat bolt right up. Or <laughs> they sat bolt upright, awake. Double and trouble shuffled on their laps. Then suddenly, the aunties and uncles and the big cousins were calling and searching for matches and candles and flashlights. Double and trouble rubbed their eyes. Anna Hibiscus jumped up and down and yelled, Hooray! Hooray! Little cousins ran shouting. Chocolate and Angel played hide and seek in the candlelight and dark. Double and Trouble looked around the big white eyes at the deep shadows and the dancing yellow candles and the beams of the white flashlight. Grandfather made a cool breeze with his fan. It was wonderful. 
the biz big cousins came downstairs. They had to do their homework at the table by the light of the paraffin lamp. Aunties drifted out to talk with the uncles on the veranda. There were jokes and laughing. The uncles teased the aunties with songs. The aunties laughed and danced and softly clapped with their hands. The swish swish of grandfather's fan joined in. The grandmother told a story. The homework stops, stopped. The, er, the, then grandmother told a story. The homework stopped. The jokes and the dancing and the songs stopped. The whole family gathered to listen to grandmother. Even Double and Trouble sat quietly. One by one, the little cousins fell asleep. When grandmother's story stopped, they would be carried by flashlight to bed. Through the screens of the open bedrooms, bedroom windows, the songs of, and the frogs and the lagoon would uh, last throughout the night. Wonderful. Oh, picture. It's a little hard to see. One evening, Anna's father and the uncle said, We have an announcement. We have bought a new generator. Now, when we the, the electricity fails, we will still have light. The big cousins shouted happily. The aunties exclaimed loudly. Grandmother and grandfather looked interested. Anna Hibiscus was excited. What did this mean? Men came with a truck. A big machine was unloaded and stationed underneath Anna Hibiscus' favorite mango tree. Anna started to look worried. Two evenings later, the light went out. The air conditionings and sewing machines and radio and tele television fell silent. It was dark. It was quiet. It was wonderful. Grandmother and grandfather sat up, double and trouble stirred, the frogs croaked, the lagoon sang, the uncles ran outside to turn on the generator. A huge engine noise was heard, and the lights came back on. The rooms were bright, and the television was loud again. Tears and shouts were heard from every corner of the house. The cousins continued with their homeworks upstairs. They had not had even had time to come down. Aunties were staring to joke went back to their tele starting to joke, went back to their television and sewing machines. Triumphant um triumphant uncles congratulated each other and went back to the radio on the run <laughs> back to the radio on the veranda. Double and trouble started to cry. Anne Hibiscus and the little cousins looked sadly at one another. There had been no flashlight or candles. There had been no hide and seek. Oh there's a, the light lit up house. Anna could see grandmother and grandfather in the corner. They looked small and old. Grandmother started to say something, but nobody heard her. The noise of the generator and the televisions and the radio and the air conditioning and the song machines was too loud. Grandmother went back to sleep. The story she would have told was gone. Grandfather lifted his fan, ready to cool himself, but the air conditioners were back on. Slowly, he lowered it. He looked sad, sadly at Anna Hibiscus and Double Trouble. Double and Trouble cried and cried until they were taken upstairs to bed. They were confused. They were upset. Now, every day, the uncles were out with the new gen generator, polishing it and oiling it and tightening it up with tools. Double and Trouble and all the cousins, little, medium, and big, watched, but they were not allowed to touch. The new generator was right underneath Anna Hibiscus's favorite mango tree. Now, whenever she claimed, came out to climb her tree, it was full of big cousins looking down at the generator. It was crowded with with uncles and little cousins admiring the generator. It was busy with friends come to. It was busy with friends come come to congr congratulate the uncles. The ground was littered with tools and oils and rags. Anne Hibiscus sucked her teeth. This is what you do in Africa when you're not happy happy with somebody or something. 
Anna Hibiscus sucked her teeth again. What was that machine doing, un doing underneath her tree? What was it doing in her compound at all? Head had come to and swallowed grandmother's stories and, and the songs of the frogs in the lagoon. It had come and blown out the candlelight and the flashlight and the jokes of the aunties and the uncles. It had come and stolen the games little cousins played in the dark. It had, it had filled the wide eyes of babies full of tears. Anna Hibiscus did not like the generator at all, at all. There's her, and there's everyone crowded around the generator. There was somebody else who did not like that generator. Somebody else who knew it, who knew it was in the way. Pronto, the old he-goat with the long, strong horns. Pronto liked to scratch his back on the very same branch of the generator that the generator stood beneath. Now the generator was blocking the branch. One day, at last, the uncles and cousins were busy with something else. Their friends had gone home, and the aunties had returned to their work. Anna Hibiscus climbed her tree alone in peace, but the generator was still there. Pronto was chewing and glaring at it. Suddenly, the generator twanged, and it wanged, and it clanged. Anna Hibiscus clung to her branch and looked down. The generator was alive! <laughs> Pronto stared at the generator. His rival had spoken. Pronto rammed the big machine with his long, strong horns. If ever a younger he-goat were to walk into the compound, Pronto would deal with him just so. He butted it hard again and again. The generator clanged and twanged and shouted. Anna was frozen on her branch. She did not know what to do. The old goat was strong, but the generator did not move one inch. Pronto gave up and walked off stiffly. He had not yet succeeded in driving his rival away, but at least he had taught him a lesson. The generator was silent. A tool came flying out from behind it. The tool was first followed by treble and then by double. Anna Hibiscus's mouth fell open. It had been trouble, trouble and double, wang, twanging and wanging the generator. Anna Hibiscus stayed up in the tree for a long time, thinking. She had decided to say nothing. She climbed down. Oh, wait, picture. So there's double and trouble uh, trying to break the generator or something. There's Pronto. And then there's Anna Hibiscus in the tree. The next time the electricity went off and the uncles came to switch on the generator, it would not start. There were no joking or laughing or dancing that night. The, ante the aunties sat sighing at their s silent sewing machines. Big cousins stared at each other over their homework. Only the little cousins were happy. Only grandfather and grandmother were content. Only Dub Double and Trouble rubbed their eyes and smiled. The uncles called the mechanic, but there was nothing he could do. The generator was broken. Kaput. Anna's, hip, hip, Anna Hibiscus's mother and father, her aunties and her uncles, and all the big cousins were very sad. Anna Hibiscus could not stop thinking about Double and Trouble and the and the generator and the and pronto ramming it and herself up in a tree saying nothing and still saying nothing now anna hibiscus could not stop thinking but she did not know what to do grandmother and grandfather noticed they noticed that when the lights went out anna hibiscus no longer shouted hooray she no longer laughed and ran and played hide and seek one day, when the house was quiet and empty, they called her. What is the matter? What is the matter, Anna Hibiscus? Grandfather asked. Nothing, gran Grandfather, replied Anna. Are you missing the generator? Grandmother asked gently. Anna burst into tears. 
grandmother and grandfather looked at each other, and Hibiscus told them the whole story. She told them how the generator had come alive, and how Pronto had rammed it, and how a tool came flying out from behind it, but followed by devil and trouble. Grandmother and grandfather laughed and laughed. They could not stop. Devil and trouble crawled over to join in the fun. They did not know why grandfather and grandmother were laughing, but they wanted to laugh too. Hooray, shouted Devil happily. Now Anna started to laugh. She could not help herself. Grandmother and grandfather and, and, and Anna Hibiscus and Double and Trouble laughed and laughed. That night, when the whole family was gathered to eat, Grandfather made an announcement. Generators, said Grandfather, are very untraditional. They are guzzlers of money. They are destroyers of the peace. God has ordained some night for modern busy noisiness and other for more traditional pursuits. God gives us electricity some nights and takes it away other nights. This is a balance between modern and traditional. Our family will spend no more money on disturbing this balance. No more generators in this compound. And a hibiscus breathed a sigh of relief. Now she need not say anything about double and trouble and pronto and the generator to anybody else. They had probably been acting under grandfather's orders. That night, in the dark and quiet, grandmother's stories were about the old he-goat, troublesome and but wise. It's, little, it's very dark. Uh. All right. Well, um, that is that. That's this episode of uh, uh, the about the generator with Anna Hibiscus or hooray for Anna Hibiscus by at Nuke, and um, that's the end of this. Well, it's there'll be. I think there's one more part. Um. Yeah. Okay. All right. There's gonna be one more part, but um, not now. So all right. By reading with Adriel. Come back next time.